<laughs> Meeting call to order today is October 1st. It is now 7.01 p.m. Town Council meeting in Town Council Chambers, um, 1170 Main Street, West Warwick, Rhode Island. John, we lead us in prayer. Yep. Let's bow our heads, please. Heavenly Father, we ask that you are present at this meeting. Bless this body with your divine spirit. Remind us all to be mindful and thoughtful in our actions. We also ask that you guide our actions as the choices we make tonight have great effect. And finally, we ask that you bless this great town and all of our many citizens. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Chair, we say the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Lachardi? Here. Councilman Messier? Here. Councilwoman Williamson? Here. Council on. Vice President D'Amico? Here. Council President Goslin? Here. There is a quorum. Mr. Major, can we make sure the mics are out on the ATU, please? Proclamation for Extra Mile Day. Mm -hmm. um, I can just explain if you want that this every year we do this proclamation for Extra Mile Day. There's so many things we do with the JCs and stuff like that. We sort of fit very well in being acknowledged with Extra Mile Day as well. We don't choose to do another whole project, but every year we have signed on a proclamation for them. Is anybody here for that proclamation? No, this is out of California. Okay. <clears throat> so, so what does that mean, Mary Ann? I mean, and go the extra mile that day. Yeah, like <laughs> when I think we do like in our cleanup days, our work days, the things like that we do. It's just a way that they put out there that all the different towns and cities in the United States that have really made a difference in their communities. And I think um, so they're recognizing West Warwick as going the extra mile. Yes. And and do they send something or is it? No, we send them a proclamation. Oh. That's every year for some. That's we've been doing this for years. Year if you want to read. They Thanks. like to put them all up somewhere in the, wherever they all are so that um, people will see all the cities and towns who work hard on their town. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Introduction for LaCroix Properties for Blossom Street. Mr. Chairman, Thomas Cronin. For LaCroix Properties, I'm here for uh, introduction and procedural Scheduling for uh, former West Valley Inn property. That's what we hope it'll look like. The, um, this is a matter that um, we're going to take this property off Providence Street on Blossom Street. It's 12.81 acres, AP 36, lots 5, 59, and 220. Um, we've been to master plan at planning. Uh, we obtained master plan hearing, and at that master plan hearing, uh, we also obtained the recommendation of council for two zoning matters that we need to take care of here before you as a legislative body. We need to change the zone of the West Valley Insight from business to R7.5, and we need to abandon a portion of Giorgio Drive. It's a paper street currently in the parking lot of the West Valley, and just 600 feet of Giorgio Drive, um, so that it can become part of the condominium property. The owners of the West Valley Inn property own both sides of this portion of the property, so uh, both, both halves of the street would go to them. Um, as you can see, we plan to demolish the existing structures and construct 66 condos and 33 buildings, single-story duplexes, each with two bedrooms. Uh, the, in, the entrance from Providence Street would be on Blossom Street. In this depiction on, on the right, lower right-hand corner, uh, off Providence Street, up Blossom Street, um, into the complex off Petraca Street. It'll have a segregated entrance so that the public portion of Petraca Street will be separated from the, the condominium private roads at that point. Obviously, public utilities are available. It's a regular condominium situation where the roads will be private, private plowing, trash pickup, utilities, drainage maintenance, all that would be private. The, um, to the north of the property is Patuxent River. Everyone here is familiar with this property. The north is the Patuxent River. 
Uh, to the east is some residential homes. There are residential homes to the south along Providence Street, and to the west is the Riverview uh, Condominium. The, uh, we need to schedule a, a public hearing, so I, uh, the feedback I need um, from the council is a date uh, far enough out where we can do advertising and public notice uh, to the abutters um, so that uh, we can have a public hearing on the change of zone and abandonment of approximately 600 feet of Giorgio Drive. Um, <clears throat> is there any particular aspects of the project that you're interested in? I could point them out to you and answer any questions. Um, we'll have, you know, obviously witnesses at the public hearing to fully explain the uh, design, the uh, traffic flow and drainage, things, things of that nature. Sure. Go ahead, it's your words. Well, I was just going to say I have had the opportunity to sit down with the LaCroix um, a, a couple of months ago to go through this plan, and they kind of talked about it. They, they're also, my understanding is in the process of talking to a couple of different builders, potentially. They've given me some of uh, properties that those builders have actually developed, and I want to take a look at some of them. I did talk to Roy yeah. LaCroix yesterday, and he said he would not be here. Um, and he pointed out the two things that, that will be needed would be a uh, change in zoning and an abandonment of, of uh, Georgia. So I understand the abandonment of Georgia, but why is it coming before town council's zoning change and not the zoning board? Uh, because, it's, because it's an actual change of the zone itself, its own business. Right. So we're not, we're not asking for a variance from that or a special use permit. We're actually asking to change the zone on the map. I see. Right. Okay. Um, Georgia Drive, can you just point, is that is that the road that comes out to Providence Street on the other side? Yes. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> this will remain a public portion of Georgia right here. And this so there'll still be two exits right. from there, correct? This would actually be just an exit. The entrance and exit will be off, off of here. But this is, if you can picture from here, Chairman, uh, to here, this is the portion we're seeking to have the town abandoned. And the town won't be responsible for plowing or anything like as they are now? Right. Currently, that's part of the parking lot. Facility. Correct. I have an existing conditions map here, which you can see. Mr. Williamson was naming the buildings earlier. I'm not quite as conversant as he is, but this is one of the facilities, and you can see that this is where Giorgio right drives right in front of yeah. Yeah. In, yep. current, in the current park. So the the actual exit is still going to be a public right of uh, public road, and it won't affect the residents to the left because I know that's. A resident that reached out to me about trash I think I spoke to you about yes. um, from the property they, they maintain and clean it now and they were just wondering what was going to happen over there so up, up and through I believe it's Rosati if I'm not mistaken well, up and through Giorgio Drive to Winter Street here although Winter Street is undeveloped those are three yeah. main public streets public streets okay just the portion that's in the actual uh, West Valley in parking lot right now or in the property would be abandoned. But the game plan is to have that part of Giorgio Drive that be one way out onto Providence Street, is that right. correct? This is, this is a one-way exit. Yes. For, for the council's knowledge, if they did come before planning. Oh, I just want to hit the button. <coughs> it's, uh, it should be on now. They did come before planning. There are a number of neighbors there Planning board took into consideration everything that was suggested of concerns. The LaCroix were aware of it. They agreed to work with, uh, you know, the neighbors to resolve whatever differences could be resolved. Master plan was granted, and at this point, you know, it goes through the other processes, and then comes back to planning for the final stages. But uh, they did put a an extensive presentation on to the planning board and we're granted the first step. Mr. Major, could you see if you turn the volume up a little bit because everybody in the back cannot hear. <coughs> what's, what's the, um, um, no? I think, I think it's, it wasn't on before. It's on. It was on. It was just on yeah. very low. Yeah, it's good. What's the time frame if, if this goes through tonight? Are they looking at, at, at starting the process? I know we're in the, the beginning stages. Are they looking to start the process beginning of the spring or? Wait a year or so, or what, what's the time frame? So uh, the next step in the development process would, if, if the town council were to grant, 
grant the changes to the zone and the abandonment of the street would be the preliminary plan review by the planning board. So that would be the engineering, uh, which in this case would mostly be consistent, consist of the uh, drainage as it relates to the Patuxent River. Okay. Um, so they'll have to go through the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management for that. So time frames are difficult to predict, but it would be from the town council back to the planning board for that preliminary plan review, which is engineering based. And that would be another public hearing. Um, so the development of the actual project would not be before the spring of next year to get uh, that through the. And my understanding is tonight is just an introduction. Um, we actually don't have anything to act on. You need to go through the process of notifying before we actually change um, in the zoning for that piece of property. Well, it needs dates, correct? Yes. That's correct. It's a, it, tonight is an introduction and a request for a procedure. Al, this is your expertise. Um, timing. Timing-wise, what do you think? DEM, spring at the earliest. But, but for us but to for actually, us, for oh, us. For you. Yes. No, for you, you should, I, I would suggest, what do you need? Three, three weeks advertising? Uh, we need to advertise it three times, so three probably, times three weeks. yeah. So, so I, I would November suggest 5th. the council. The first one on in November? In November, yeah. so that that gives them the ability to move forward. Uh, they can't take their next step at planning until they uh, leave here. And you're meeting the November, November 5th. 4th, 4th, 4th or 5th. Uh, I think it's the I, I would say, do you meet twice in November? Yeah. I, w I would put it down for your, your second meeting, giving them the opportunity, I think, to get all their paperwork in line for their advertising. The advertising has to be very specific well, in for case them. we don't meet twice in November, because we haven't really spoke about that from the council, would November 5th, no, 4th or 5th work yeah, for sure. you? Sure, November 5th. November 5th. Yeah. November 5th would be yeah, They'll have three fine, weeks. Yeah. And should we be separate from the town council meeting? That should be a 6 o'clock meeting, possibly, with separate mm -hmm. items no. or? We did have a, a, a good turnout, let's say. We'll stay positive. We had a good turnout at planning. There will be uh, some people here with concerns and questions about the plan. I would refer to Tim. I, don't, I would think it, something like that has to be part of your regular council meeting. You can call it a council meeting and have that sole item on the so agenda. And we can start at 6 o'clock. Right, well, you, could, you could add it. But if you start at 6 o'clock, um, as council has indicated, you might find yourself in an hour or two hour hearing <coughs> and go debate with some of the local uh, neighbors. And that's why I'm saying if we start at 6 o'clock that day, because we know it's probably going to be interesting to say. Or just have a light calendar, have a light agenda on that day, if you can. Uh, we'll see. So we'll determine whether that should be 6 or 7. Does anybody have a problem if we do have to do 6 o'clock? Beginning, no, beginning of November? November 5th. November 5th. Oh. Right. All right. That sounds good. And I assume that laundry list of, uh, in the letter is addressing many of the concerns that the, the people that live in the area had? Yes. Yes. I, I will get, if the council has not received it, I will get to the council a copy of the planning board decision which has a lot of the stipulations imposed by the planning board as a result of the uh, public's comments. So I'll get a copy of that to all of the council members so you know where the, where the, what the planning board has done up until now. We actually have a copy of the letter that, that Joe DiMartino as chair sent to LaCroix Properties outlining um, okay. it was attached. That, and it, okay. Yes. Any other comments, concerns, questions? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, Council. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ordinance number 2019-9, first reading, previously tabled, sponsored by President Council President Goslin, an ordinance amending Chapter 10 licenses and business regulations, Article 14, donation collection recycling bins of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of West Warwick. Move to take it off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Next is we'll move the ordinance. Second. Move and seconded. Al? What, what happened was we came before you a couple of weeks ago, and I think there was some confusion in that what we were trying to do here and the program of the curbside recycling. And at the last meeting, we made it clear through the manager's report 
that those are two separate items. What is before you tonight is a update of the original recycling that you had passed. The big change that we're looking for was that in that original ordinance, it was contractor and or owner. And we realized that that doesn't work. It has to be contractor and owner. We have to have them all responsible. So that's primarily the gist of what we did here. We put some teeth into it. The other thing was I moved, because no one had registered up <clears throat> until this point in time, I moved the original notice date out so that give Paula the time to get new notices out, get the building office up. I moved it to the end of the year. Uh, and in addition, if the council passes this, I have updated uh, notices that are for Paula to get out, send them out. And we also added that when the building office is acting and when they file their applications, they have to put their email addresses in so that we'll have multiple ways of notifying. And, and one of the reasons I think this got tabled was we were talking about possibly having the bins totally removed from yes. town. But we found out that you cannot do that. Can't do that. Um, so at that point, as that got resolved, that's why it's back on the agenda. Any questions? Any public comment? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote. Jay? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mary Beth? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. Ordinance number 2019-11, second reading, sponsored by Council President Goslin, and ordinance amending Chapter 3, Amusements, Article 2, Theatrical Performance, Shows, Exhibitions, and Dance Live Bands, Sections 12, 13, and 14 of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of West Forward. The ordinance. Second. Move and second. Discussion. Now. This, this was strictly the ordinance that was in effect dealt with theater and a number of things that you passed each year. It did not include filmmaking, so I just added filmmaking in to make the ordinance Very all easy. inclusive. Yeah. Any questions? Any public comment? Hearing none, roll call vote. Jay? Yes. Jason? Yes. Mary Beth? Yes. John? Yes. And I vote yes. <coughs> Town Council acting as Liquor Commission. Class B Victualing li Liquor License resolved that the following application for a Class B Victualing Liquor License having advertised in accordance with law for a hearing on this date, no remonstrance or objectors present. The same is hereby approved. Deborah's Down, Down the Road Incorporated, 826 Main Street, West Warwick, Rhode Island, 02893. Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion to move? Uh, Make a motion. I'll second. So just a brief discussion on this. They came before us. We've already approved them. The issue was they decided to change the name to another name, which is Debra's Down the Road, which is the old Eagles Club. Um, if anybody has been by there, they can see it's been totally rehabbed. Um, so the only difference is it's changing from Debra's to Debra's Down the Road. Um, they're hoping to be open within the next month, so I, I think it'll be a great addition to the neighborhood, especially what's going on with the laundromat next door and Lippin Mill being rejuvenated as far as construction goes. So, any public comment? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Town Council acting as Town Council resolution transfer of surplus funds to close old road bond fund leak fund and stormwater utility grant fund resolved that the Town Council approves the transfer of eighty nine thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars of fiscal year 2019 surplus funds to fund 150 road bond fund fund 450 leak fund and fund 807 stormwater utility grant fund from the Fiscal year 2019 general fund surplus. This will eliminate the deficits and close the funds. I'll move the resolution. Second. Move and second. Kristen. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm not sure if you got a chance to read the memo, but this is basically looking for your approval to transfer some of our surplus funds for fiscal year 19 to close out these funds that 
have been running in that have had a deficit fund balance some for years the road bond it's been there for years it'll clean up our financials and it'll look better we're having a bond rating call on the 10th and something like this goes a long way with that how, how does this affect does will this have any effect on money that we have currently for road bond no this is a, some of my yeah so stuff. this is an old road bond from 2007 it's in a completely different fund, and it's just been overspent now for, I don't know, 12 years. So no one did anything about it. Going, going about back, and I can give a little bit of history of this, 2007, Ward 5, which was uh, Councilman Kelsey at the time, he actually overspent his road bond by, I think, $125,000, but it was no fault of his own because um, the price of oil and fuel skyrocketed during the paving process and received the bill in the way that and I'm, I'm not sure if it was Malcolm at the time Malcolm Moore when was two, it 2007 2008 I think it was Malcolm yeah, yeah. Um, he divided it up based upon linear footage of road and <laughs> ended up putting a lot more on Ward 5 that he was unaware of so that was an issue but I thought this was all resolved yeah, it's been sitting on our financials so like that. We've gone through four finance directors has been sitting there. So this will clean these funds up and close them out? They'll close them out, correct. Are there any other deficit funds? Nope, I went through it. Those are the ones. Okay. And, and um, have we come up with a final number for our surplus? For this? No, the auditors are coming the first week in October. I'm just fin finalizing my final journal entries for fiscal year 19. We're still looking... Looking at the number that I projected in the in the report, um, and then I have the 60-day rule where we have to record the first 60 days of revenue. That's going to bring it up significantly. Okay, that's so, about 600,000. So there's no danger that this would exhaust that surplus. Okay. No way. <laughs> you say it's going to bring it up by 600,000 more yeah, than what the 60 we anticipated. Day, yeah, we yeah we collected in the first 60 days about 600,000 of prior year taxes okay. that we. So book back. When we're looking through this and we see charges for Truex, Truex is usually hired by DPW. Yeah. That's where that should have been paid out of and not out yep. of these funds. Yeah, I definitely because it was for all the catch basins. It just wasn't for that point two file point two mile stretch of um whatever it was, New London. Yeah. New London. Yeah. yeah. This was so there was two in there. There was one just for that point two five mile stretch and then there was one for it said it said it all <coughs> of the catch basins, I'm like, well, this is... Yeah, that should have came out of DP. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any questions for Kristen? <coughs> so no. you will actually take care of that? Do the I'm going to do it as of fiscal year 19, so when we get the audit in fiscal year 19, these will be closed. Be there. Yep. Right. Perfect. Do you know what... Uh, sorry. You said they're coming in in November, correct? Uh, no, they're coming October 7th. So when will we get a... How long will it take to get us a report as to... Um, they're going to be here for a couple of weeks. The report will come out, um, will be issued by December 27th. Okay. I guarantee you that. Because it has to be. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it has issued, to be for multiple reasons, yeah. but yes. So they are issuing the report right. to you, basically. You're, yeah, yeah. You, and then I will get it to, to you guys. You'll get it bound probably sometime in January, but we'll get a PDF. Yes. Okay. And then it'll yes. go up on the website. And All right. Happy right. your Christmas Thanks. present. Yep. Merry yeah. Christmas. Any other comment? Thank you. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Consent agenda, license applications. Resolved as the consent agenda having been posted, all matters being referred to proper departments and being disposed of or awaiting recommendation, the same is hereby approved. Move resolution. Second. second. Moving second. Discussion? Any public discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Addition of taxes, tax assessor. It's resolved that the attached additions in the amount of $14,577.51 presented to the tax assessor for approval of the town council in accordance with Article 25, Section 5 of the West Warwick Code of Ordinances is hereby approved. The original list is on file in the office of the tax assessor. With resolution. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? This is actually a good news thing. Addition of taxes. Um, of revenue, anyway. Yeah. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Minutes of the previous meeting resolved that the minutes of the September 17, 2019 Town Council meeting and September 17, 
2019 Town Council Executive Session are hereby accepted. Move the resolution. Second. Move and second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Appointment of alternate for the West Warwick Planning Board. Resolved that the Town Council hereby appoints the following individual to serve as an alternate member of the West Warwick Planning Board for the Town of West Warwick with a term to expire 7 2020. Move resolution. Second. second. Move and second. Discussion. Um, well, I, I want to just say that I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Joe Garcia. I don't know if he was able to attend tonight. I think we've had him at four different meetings. Yeah, he's yeah, been so trying he's to been come here. to meetings yes. and, you know, uh, unfortunately he's not here tonight, but certainly qualified um, seems very serious so I would certainly move his name second Actually, did we have to take that off the table first yeah motion you gotta have a motion to take, motion it, to take it off the table second <clears throat> all in favor aye aye, aye. And a motion for the uh, resolution all right move the resolution do have a second second and now just move a name and I'll move the name Joe Garcia a second we already had the discussion. There was two applicants, uh, Michelle Lombardi and Joe Garcia. So, council has moved the name of Joe Garcia. The only question I have, um, and I, I support this. Um, but, I mean, the resume is incredible. But when we're putting somebody on a board or a commission, I think one of the things that we need to make sure going forward is that that applicant understands that it is a commitment and. They should know when that board or committee is meeting, and usually on a monthly basis, because I just don't want to be running into issues like we are on not this board particularly, but other boards that we don't have a quorum. And then a month goes by and we have one, and then two months go by and we don't have a quorum for those two months. Um, it really just puts us in a bad light. So, and I realize everybody has, has I would think, good intentions, but. But in, in life happens, believe me, I know. But I think if this is continuous thing on some of these boards, and we need to rethink this process. Yeah, we're actually having a problem on the pension yeah. board. Yes, a serious, so serious use. problem. Um, so, so that's yeah. we could talk about that another day. But we um, we, Al, have, we have been very fortunate on both planning and zoning yeah. since I 2004. Never had the problem of. You know, people might miss a meeting, but we've never had the problem of Having people cancer. not not showing. Not have a uh, you know, yeah. and especially with zoning, where without five members, you cannot meet. But you have alternates, though, right? There's alternates on both of those boards. You have to have them. You have to have five. But you right. But if we if we have th three people for, and I in my 14 years, I think we've canceled zoning twice, because you know, situation. But well, planning's not as bad because you can go forward with four. But with zoning, you have to have five. And, and I can say in all this time I've been here, no no problems. <clears throat> and, and, I, and I think this individual has definitely showed that he's committed. He's come here numerous exactly times. Exactly right. Sat here for hours on end and only to be turned away because of uh, it wasn't ready for the appointment yet. So. All right, with that being said, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Reports, director's report, tax assessor. How are you doing, Sal? Good evening, everybody. Uh, did you receive my report through the email? So I'll just go over what we've It's attached going on, on the agenda. Attached over there? Okay. Um, we've Gotten past the first quarter. Uh, it was a little longer than usual because of the budget process that took an extra month out of. But things are back to normal. Motor vehicle bills were going out last week of June. Real estate intangibles went out late July. The collector's office has gotten through. There, you know, a lot of the mail. I don't see any of the mail backed up that I normally see when I'm down there. Uh, we haven't. I haven't really gotten that many appeals to the new revaluation that was in place that we had. I've had 60 that I've I've answered them all to, at this point. I had eight that I hadn't when I 
moved this report. Um, the appeal period stays open until the middle of November, which is a month later because of the budget being passed a month later. Uh, there were no motor vehicle appeals, motor vehicles for pretty much any sake, they're just getting less and less. I think we have uh, three more years and then it's gonna be gone completely. Everything goes so. I tell everyone to keep on electing Representative Matty Yellow because he's the driving force behind that. Uh, real estate transfers uh, going through uh, just the normal ones. There are a few tough ones that uh, those are the 10% that haven't been done and that ha uh, the clerk that we share with the building inspector's office is uh, back on her regular <coughs> schedule between inspection and our office. Uh, Board of Review, I don't know if you've heard, but the chairman that's been there for I think over 20 years, Dean Dancourt, uh, is uh, going to resign. He's not going to do that until he gets a replacement. He's, he's working on, he, he had one, but he's not, I'm not sure if she's going to be available to do it or not. Uh, but he's, he, we said he will stay, especially with, now that we're on a reval year. Um, I don't know if 60 is a lot, this is my, Last, last year we had nothing. I mean, I, I was, was going to ask you just that. Typically you know, last year, out. you know, I think there were a handful. There might have been a dozen or so. Last year, um, there are eleven thousand parcels in town. Ten percent is <laughs> eleven hundred. We've got sixty. Uh, a lot of the attorneys wait until the last moment to turn theirs in, but I don't expect to see. You know, maybe, maybe double, maybe. And most of them are. Uh, real estate on houses. So. Any questions for Sal? I, I have one. Um, <clears throat> uh, tangibles. Um, yes. In this kind of, I guess this, I guess the process is, is all related here. Um, I know you mentioned during budget time that the tangible assessor goes out, spends like 50% of his time on the road. Yes. Um, and I know that's at different times, <clears throat> excuse me, different times throughout the year. Um, the businesses that come before us for permitting, when we, we give out, like we did tonight, um, basically a permit to do business in West Warwick, and then there's a renewal year after year. Are all these businesses coming before us? Before me? Before us, meaning, I mean, is this affected by the tangible list? We see, th we see those businesses. We get copies of those licenses and so that we know, that alerts us to go out and inspect or to make a name change on a business or, you know, if it's but a do, new do you, does, so when he goes out, does he head the process though? Like, does he go up and down, I don't know, pick does, on, he on actually, Main he had, Street and, yes. and go to every he, business? He actually has a book with, the, with, okay. with cards with all of these businesses in them. There's a routine that we had when we were in Cranston together. And it's a route through town, starts at one end of town, we just wait through uh, along the back streets, you know, north to south, east to west. So he goes through, and as he goes by all the different businesses, you know, is it the same business? Yes, and it gets a check mark. Is it a new business? Oh no, okay, someone new. So I will, I will be going back to that one. So it usually goes yeah. through first. Um, the second time around, if they're still there, because sometimes they're not there that long. Mm -hmm. You know why? You know we don't want to spend a lot of time doing work and they're only there for a couple of months before they go out. So normally okay. we go out now, we'll go out again after uh, like in January. If they're all there, they all get forms to file for uh, all the furniture and equipment. Okay. So how does he audit that? So in other words, say like all these Debra's down the road, that's a new license tonight. Obviously he's gonna go in there and do some, he's gonna give them the form Right, but yeah, he'll stop in. Form, he'll stop. I mean, I can put, I only got two bar stools. Yeah, and no. I only, he I will stop in there. Form. He will definitely he stop in. He'll go in. Uh, whether they give him the grand tour or not, you know, when you, you step in the door, I mean, you can see what's there. Depending on what they write down. I mean, we, we've had that situation with. So how is that assessed, though? So if you, all right, so I'm just, just trying to think out loud. You go into a business, just say, just say restaurant, just, use this one yep. you go in there and the person puts down on the form yes I have 16 bar stools and I have all this space and I have five tables or whatever it may be and the tangible assessor disagrees with that what happens at that point 
they get to appeal to the Board of Review. Okay. We know how so, much it should be. We know. I mean, if someone says it cost me five hundred dollars, and we know it's five thousand, we know. So you put down a cost of those those yeah. bar stools and those tables. It's not just how much you buy. You know what you're buying. Your signs. Or I mean, if you put a new roof in, or you put some siding on outside, or that's all leasehold improvements that you're liable for, also. Okay. You know, owner occupied is different, you know, because you you own yeah. the property. Where if you're leasehold and you're making all those improvements to it. Okay. Any other questions, Ben? I have one. So I, I know I had a constituent of mine call me up on um, Potter Avenue area. I think you guys did the research yes, on it. Yes. Yes. Question I would have is, for years the property is it was a tennis court slash whatever um, land, mm -hmm. just raw land. And that individual now parks trucks with a couple of ladders on it, and it went from residential tax rate to commercial tax rate. Right. How does that just change like that without that that piece of property notice? was um, well? No, it was noticed when they got their uh, taxes this year. It was residential. Well, not just the taxes. Year. I also believe that when they got their uh, notice from the revaluation company, I think it had the uh, change in use at that time also. That property's being used for commercial uses. They're parking commercial trucks there. There's two or three sheds. There's, I don't know how many ladders. I personally drove by and looked at yeah. it. It's being used for commercial So purposes. now, does that person have the right to put in a nice big commercial garage in a residential no. property? No. So why would it be taxed as commercial because if it's they don't being have used the same rights way. as commercial? It's being used that way. I assess at, on use. But, it, but it's I'm, up to I'm, someone else. I'm just, it's I'm up just to the building way. inspector to enforce him not to use it that way. So, okay, so I, so in other words, if he's using it for that way, why wouldn't we have the building official enforce it before charging him top dollar of commercial rate? Without any, and yes, he got it through his, uh, uh, but it went for how many years that was residential? They've been, they've been there for years, it's been residential, and they've always had the vehicles there. All of a sudden, whatever it may be, but now all he yeah. asked is, can yeah. you put a commercial garage up? How many finance directors missed the open? I'm, I'm not arguing that. But again, can you, you're, you're saying he can't put a commercial garage on commercial property. I'm not saying he can, what, what he can or can't do. I'm telling you that I am assessing him for what he's being used as. That's being used as a commercial piece of property, so I'm assessing him that way. I deny that appeal. They are now in front of the Board of Review, and they get to make the decision whether to keep it or, or change it. All right. Anyone else? That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion action, police storage proposal sponsored by Councilman Lachardi. <clears throat> Chief? This is, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> this was, um, this was previously tabled, I believe. I just didn't think we took any action. Yeah, we didn't. Um, Go ahead and table it. Yeah, sorry. We didn't take any action. Um, and the chief, I knew the chief was out of town, so I think issues came up, questions came up, and I think so the chief I think can the answer. issues that came up last time revolved around storage on town property versus private property. I think that's been resolved. However, yesterday, um, the town manager brought up some, some questions about property ownership and accessory use. Um, that's going to require a little bit more research. I've spoken to the American Legion leader, um, part of the Part of the plot map shows that they own some of the property and, and they have no issue um, for us using it as planned and we'll do whatever it takes on their part to make that happen. But the map kind of shows question, the big question on the bulk of the property is whether it's town land or state land. We need to make that determination before we proceed <clears throat> and then figure out what the process is on accessory use since it's a different plot than has a physical building then we'd have to do some possibly administrative um, ruling to to make it permissible. Would we have to get permission from the state, obviously? If, if, it, if I have to go through the state, I'm probably not willing to go through the effort to get it done because I'll be retired by the time it gets accomplished. <laughs> um, but I'll, I think I'll, I'll try to get the first base first and then, and then see where it goes. So at this point, at least in my opinion, 
there's nothing to go forward on asking for your permission to expend the funds until we so get a little bit more information. So we're still discussing. Is, is there a possibility to to move to build up on the existing facilities in here? The one the ones that you currently have for the police department. I mean, there's no way to expand inside our building. Um, there's only expansion outside. So I could build something outside our building, but our parking lot is already occupied and we're short parking spots as it is for police vehicles, employees, and visitors. I really wouldn't. I'm talking about the current lockers that we. No, I mean, we, we, we're okay. bursting at the seams. Okay. Right. So th there's nothing else I can do inside to, to make it more efficient when it comes to storage, whether it be cleaning products or evidence. Okay. Which is what I want to redo inside the building. I just want to get some stuff yep. out. I understand. All right. I'll take this matter up at a later date. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Curbside Textile and Soft Recyclables, sponsored by Town Manager Zielinski. Uh, yes, good evening. This is a, an update to our last discussion. A uh, RFP has been drafted. It's being reviewed. Uh, there'll be some uh, changes uh, you know, to that RFP. And once that's completed, it will be on our website uh, for uh, uh, consideration for any company that would like to submit a proposal you know, to work in conjunction Again, with the town on this uh, program. So that's sort of where we are. Uh, you know, we have to make some changes uh, to uh, the draft we have, but uh, you know, those should be made, and uh, hopefully shortly, and then we'll send it out for a, a, a reasonable period of time. And if things go well, uh, a recommendation uh, would be submitted to the council for your first meeting in November. Any questions for the town manager? Any public comment on that? I'm sure. Nicole, do you have any update on that? I know you've been working a long time. And unfortunately, I know people are saying the town council are dragging their feet, but this was just yeah, brought to us right. last month. So I actually, last year I was, uh, let's just go back. Cause Before Coventry even did, I know you yes, had many discussions yes. about this. Last year around this time, I was approached with Simple Recycling um, from Massachusetts. And they're now in North Providence, Bristol, uh, now Coventry. Uh, they're, they're in a few. So I, I had that, but Simple Recycling does not start throughout the winter. And so that was tabled for a little while, mm -hmm. and then of course we got into the budget in the spring and other projects. And then post-budget, um, actually this May, I was approached by another um, vendor who was interested in this as well. And it was like, yes, I want to get this going, let's do that. Of course, we had more complications with the budget. It just was not a priority. Now um, we've come into this, and now we've been into contract negotiations. So we're, it's just been a process of, of prioritizing what the council and everyone's been busy with. And um, I currently now have uh, three vendors that are interested. So of course it only makes sense that an RFP goes through. I have to, I have Legally, to put, have to I, I, I have to do that. Um, so it's just this process now. And I mean, this, I know um, there's been talk on Facebook. Unfortunately, it's just a lock, a very big lack of information that's out there for people. Um, understanding how the soft textile recycling works from bins and whatnot. Um, this would not affect any, any of that at all. It's basically a voluntary thing for any resident to take part in, and it's a convenience. Um, and it would also keep a lot of what they would throw away because they don't want to put it in the back of the car until they drop off at a, at a recycling bin uh, for six months. We all know we all do that. Um, it would be an available, an, a thing that would be available <coughs> for them to recycle outside on their curb it would not take any clothing away from any charity that someone would want to specifically donate to. This, um, so if somebody has beautiful clothes that they want to donate to a specific charity, by all means do this. This is not a town taking over your will of what you want to do with your clothes. This is a convenience. Um, the vendors involved would take sole responsibility of the services and um, information going to and from residents. I would be the support system for that. And um, 
it would just be a way to keep these textiles out of the trash and making some income from it as well because all of this, no matter whether it's a soft textile recycling bin or a bag on the curbside, it's all business. It, they are all businesses. They all go, they all these clothes end up in the same sorting facilities outside of the state. So I just want to make that well, clear I as mean, well. And there's nothing wrong with businesses trying to make money. I mean, Mega Disposal is a business and we give them right, money to take right. our trash away. So there's nothing wrong with you know, businesses making money. Right. And Savers has to keep their yeah. employees employed. And, you know, profit has to come to pay for the drivers who drive. This is, it's not, I think, um, a lot of people misunderstand that when they put their clothes in something that says goodwill that it gets sorted right there by one person and distributed to little churches it's not the way it works most anymore. of the and most of the clothes that's gonna that are gonna go in these bags are clothes that can be recycled and turned into something else but they're not clothes that, that somebody can able, is able to wear well it, it can be so it, it, all depends. it, it really but depends mostly. and this is what's great about this program and these sorting facilities out of state. They break down what is wearable. Clothes that are wearable get distributed to those that need it, whether it's to countries, other countries that will actually sell it and now their business and making an economy for their poor area, or sometimes it just goes to the poor people that need it. Um, other things, J. Crew, uh, Patagonia, actually buy textiles, break them down again, and reuse the materials. So um, that's a really and, neat thing. Some people don't realize that other companies actually buy the soft textiles, as well as it becoming, um, it can become um, insulation, whatnot. So yeah, it, it's, it's a huge production. So typically, would all three do it? I know the one in Coventry picks up on your trash day. You leave the pink bag out. Is, would all three of them typically be the same way? You'd leave it, that bag? It would be, yes. It would be a very similar um, program. You'd have a set day. It's not, because I also wouldn't want it to be where these bags laying out there for multiple days. So you'd no, have a set right. day to we come would, in. I'd, right. We want to make it one one stop shop, basically. Like, this is your trash day, the recycling day, this is and did, your... And did you say they don't usually pick up in the winter, or they don't start during the winter? This was one vendor. Okay, okay. Waste Zero, Simple Recycling, at the time when I sat with them, that was part of their proposal. So, again... Um, everybody's going to be asked. Through our RFP, whether, you know... And we're comparing apples to apples. Right. Whether it's two companies or mm -hmm. 20 companies coming out. Correct. Exactly. So we're going to so, look at what we're looking for for the program that would fit the town of West Warwick. And yes, that's exactly it. Well, I mean, I think what you're asking is if some of them might offer different... Uh, no, I'm some, comparing apples. To the, the bid form <coughs> is going to be... Well, here's, what, here's why I'm asking. Because I, I've, I've got calls over the weekend on this from three different people, basically going with three different perceptions after reading social media posts. And the question, one of the questions I got was, um, I thought this was going out to bid. And I was a little caught off guard by everything. As was um, I. And how does, it seems like the town, <clears throat> is the town involved or not? Because it seemed like this was presented to what this was presented to us. I know you've been working hard on this. Mm -hmm. But it, it was almost like the, the whole program was, was outlined before it even came to the council. So, and other nonprofits are going to be getting some money off this and I just I didn't feel comfortable I really know what to say so my question is how much is is this going to be a town sponsored program and is the town how much is the town going to be involved and as a councilman what's going what's the town going to get out oh. of this yeah the the program is is it's pretty similar no matter how whoever runs it how it, it standard, operates yeah. but we're going to have our requirements which are going to be the standard requirements uh, for uh, this type of program you know insurance requirements those type of things we'll be asking for uh, examples of materials you know they intend mm -hmm. to use all kinds of information like that uh, we will have a an evaluation criteria and a group of uh, town employees who are going to be evaluating it based upon the criteria that's established. So it will be a uh, fair and open process, and uh, uh, certainly it's going to be heavily weighted on how much you know uh, revenue is going to come to the town, but also you know the capability of the firms doing the work. So 
Uh, that's why it's taking, you know, the draft we have has to be looked at and put these items in so that it can be evaluated uh, properly and uh, you know, fairly. So the, so the question that I received was, there was specific individuals that said we're coming in October or November or whatever. The question that was asked of me was could, even if the town went into their own and it went out to RFP, and a, that specific company or those companies weren't awarded, say five companies came in, we chose one. Can those other four just start their own without town approval? Well, can they just go door to door and have give their bags out and throw it out on the curb? Because it is town. Once it's on the curb, it's town. It couldn't be a curbside. It'd have to be within property, I believe. Is that correct? Well, that happens now. I mean, big <coughs> brothers and big I sisters would, call and they say, come to leave your, your house. stuff. Yes. yes, but again, can they distribute that bag to all the residents in the town of West Ward and cut the town right out? Is the question I have. Uh, I can, I'm not 100% sure, but I would think that if someone would come to someone's house, go to their house, pick something up, uh, that would be permissible. Could be wrong, but that would be permissible. If you're going to use a public sidewalk uh, for that purpose, I believe that's where the partnership comes in with the town. If you look at the other communities that have uh, partnered with companies, uh, they use the town, you know, the sidewalk, for the purpose, and it's also in conjunction with, or I believe it's in conjunction with, trash pickup. Mm -hmm. So it's that one-stop shop as, as, as being discussed. So to answer your question, uh, am I 100% sure uh, that someone can operate on their own? No, but I would think that logic would say yes, you could do that, but you have to go to the door and it's less convenient for the person. But that would have nothing to do with the town? No. Nothing that would be my, that no. my layman's opinion. Uh, they, they could just, they, somebody could do that. Uh, and then the, where the town comes in is the use of the sidewalk and the use of the uh, uh, routes that we have and the days that we have. That's where the partnership between a community and a vendor would be. And that would all be laid out? In, in this in this yes. proposal mm -hmm. yes just like any RFP everybody right. gets the same exact application. Yeah, everyone will get the same exact right. information if someone has a question in right. the only difference is we're not we're not asking for <laughs> we're not looking to pay out right. well, yeah, so be which, which one <clears throat> either gives the town the best right. deal right. Which we, the thing is right. it's it's we're putting this as a town program, and especially me as a solid waste recycling coordinator, um, my face is behind that program too. I want to make sure that whoever's going out picking up, you know, they're not screaming at residents, they're not, you know, that it, it's a good company to work with, a good company to represent with the town as well. Yeah, I mean, because that makes, I mean, we, we have RFPs come off where some, where we pay, pay a little more, but maybe that company has a better track record or, 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 you know, recommendations from different towns. So, I mean, those things come into play as well. Right. And again, those, those are things we'll decide. At least it's going to come to us on the first, first week then, of November. Uh, for example, if once the uh, uh, proposal or request for proposals are out and if someone has a question, the question will be in writing and the response will be in writing and the question and response will go to all uh, individuals that have requested documents. So again, it's going to be like normal, like a normal, regular process, so that uh, you know uh, everyone will have the same information to develop a proposal on. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get it going quickly. <laughs> oh. And where will those quickly in, a in a reasonable way? Right. Where will those funds come into? What what account will we put those funds in? And they could go into our recycling. It all ends up in the general, and even though it's a revenue, it's still going to show up in the revenue side. Well, I guess, I mean, who, who has the ability to spend those funds is more my oh, question. I mean, we could put them in a restricted fund. It would okay. be up to... That's a discussion to still. Yeah, okay. Discussion yeah. All right. Hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Nicole. Okay. Thank you. Upcoming appointments, 
Sewer Use Appeals Board, one alternate member with a term to expire 10 2021, one term to expire 10 2020, one term to expire 10 2022. Board of Tenant Affairs, one term to expire 2 2021, public, one to expire 11 2019, public. Recreation Committee, two full members. Pension Board, one term to expire 11 18 2020, one term to expire 11 18 21, three terms to expire. 11, 18, 19. Technology Committee, two terms to expire, 5, 31, 2021, and three terms to expire, 5, 31, 22. Planning Board, one alternate member, term to expire, <coughs> 7, 2020. West Warwick Housing Authority, one term to expire, 11, 2019. Arctic Redevelopment Commission, one term to expire, 10, 1, 19. Board of Assessment and Review, one term to expire, 3, 2020. Mr. President, can I make a comment regarding um, upcoming appointments? Sure. So the technology committee, it says there's two terms to expire 531, three terms to expire 531 2022. Um, my understanding is, based on conversations that I had in July, um, at least three of the five members do not plan on returning. Um, I don't know if we received resignations. I don't think we did. So I thought Solicitor De uh, De Fiore was going to speak to Paula regarding the matter, but I don't think anything's happened. Um, is it possible to seek out resignations from these members if they're not returning so that we can actually post these positions? I think, you know, we had an issue where everybody thought there was a committee, they attended meetings, um, basically wasted their time because it turns out there wasn't actually a committee, and then we resolved that, but based on, you know, the whole debacle with the application process, nobody wanted to return. I think the only resubmitted application came from Colonel Knott. Other than that, we didn't receive any. So I'd like to get those resignations so that we can start reposting. So what normally happens is sometimes Paula will reach out to them. So if we can just have them reach out to all five members and see if they're seeking reappointment. And then if not, please and, uh, submit a resignation letter. She usually does a pretty good job with that if we need to. Usually they send them, but I will have to. They, may, they, they probably don't know they need to send it. Yeah. <coughs> okay. She can take care of it. Sure. Thank you. Well, I hope they, they have been posted already. I know they were posted last time and this time, yeah. so you're covered there. It's just a question of having the resignation letter. Right. So you don't have to go through the posting process. At again. least a letter of We usually get a letter of intent and they want to be reappointed yes. or not right. reappointed. Right. We haven't received any. So. Two questions. On number six, the planning board, is this. The That's alternate tonight. member. This is the one we just filled tonight. Point, yeah. filled tonight. So yeah. this will be off for the next meeting. Should right. be. Do we, we have, have no other um, committees that are due to? Uh, I do believe she has one application right now, but there's no none of them that we can put on. They haven't been advertised for three times. Okay. Yet. Yeah. That was my next question. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. One of the big key ones is number four as of right now. Yes. Like I said, they're they're canceling meeting after meeting because people aren't attending. Um, we had two people resign without sending us resignation letters, so we weren't able to fill those positions. And the um, other individuals haven't showed up. Uh, they give a very short notice of not showing up, and then all of a sudden uh, they have to cancel a meeting. We've had people who are waiting for their pensions for a couple of months now. Um, More than a couple. And, it, and it's, well, yeah, yeah. And it's four, four or five, four or six five months. months yeah. And it's very unacceptable because. I mean, they have to live, too. They have to... So, in a situation like that, Mr. Solicitor, maybe you can answer. <clears throat> when you have, especially st the pension board where people are waiting for, for their checks to live, and meetings keep getting canceled, at what point does, do we step in, or can we step in to do anything? All you do is appoint... If those who are appointed don't show up, they have to be removed. They can be removed for cause. So you can always have, but you have to have someone there to do the administrative uh, process of reviewing and then either granting or denying the pension. The town council themselves cannot replace the okay. pension board with town council members. So what happens at this point when you're... If there's no quorum, you can't meet and everything gets... So these people could continuously go without there's getting There's going to be a checked. backlog, right. That's why it's up to the council to make sure that if people don't want to sit, either remove them, ask for the resignations, and appoint people that will. So can we as a council go
go through the process right now with each member of the pension board and ask them if they want to continue to be on this board. Absolutely, but right now, if you've got and who would that if, go if you've got five people on the board and two of them continually show up, you don't have a quorum. Obviously, you don't have to worry about those two. Right. But right. if the other three have already indicated by their actions or behavior that they're not going to show up regardless of the reason, that's the time to have a talk to them and say, listen, either you're going to resign or you're going to show up or we're going to replace you, and then you have to start the process removing them for cause because they won't okay. show up to the meetings. So I met with Al Haru <coughs> this week, mm -hmm. um, was it last week? Sometime last week or the week before, up there around 6, 7 o'clock, him and Tracy were doing some pension work, and I sat down with both of them. They shared their concerns with me, and uh, we're going to – there was – unforeseen circumstances like a death in the family mm -hmm. but they still ended up where they'd only have three they ended up with two and they need that three at the meeting to go on um, but there's two two individuals that have been spotty on coming and going and not showing up so so, so we have a meeting scheduled the pension board does for October yeah. um, and from what I heard is they didn't have one in September and we have individuals waiting to get the yes that they can receive their pension check. How can we confirm that there will be an October meeting? So I, I will tell you, Al and Tracy. We can't. You, you, you can't confirm until that meeting so happens that particular night. Let, let me put it to you this so way. So we can't ask the question. We can't have somebody. Jay, hold on one sec before I can answer this yeah, for right. you before anybody else goes on. Al and Tracy do their due diligence. They send emails weeks before. Are you still going to be able to attend? Are you still going to? And, and they continue. And they continue to send those emails, and they get the yes, yes, yes. At 2 a.m. the night of the meeting, the day of the meeting, they'll get, can't come today. Done. So they're trying to do their due diligence. I'm not saying they're not. And, and, and bottom so. Bottom line is people aren't getting paid. Right? But, but again, so we have to figure that out. And if we have to get somebody in there, I mean, nobody's applying for this one board. Let's face it, it's a very tough board to be on. It gets scrutinized constantly, and some people just don't want we put town employees on there thinking it was better, and the town employees have abandoned the pension board. They have, they have said, sorry, I resigned, I'm too busy, or whatever it may be, and it's their pension. So we, we need to either start recruiting qualified people, or we need to get qualified employees, or somebody who wants to really spend time on this board. Al, well, about reliable people, yeah. so I'm looking at the dates, May 9th, um, it was canceled, right? Two people weren't there. May 9th was rescheduled to May 20th. They did have a quorum. July 8th, two more people were out. Same people. Is it the September minimum? 9th, is there, is there same a minimum before you? Out. Is there a minimum like meetings missed before you can like r remove no. them? No. That's why it's very difficult to remove an appointed person for cause if you don't have the rules, policies, and procedures before you, giving them notice that if they don't attend so many meetings, they can be removed. Okay. But if they're not going to show up, there's other ways to handle it because again, you can ask them to come here and ask them why they're not attending. I can understand a death in the family, mm -hmm. I can understand an illness, but if you're con con continually missing your monthly meetings, you're not fulfilling your obligation. Yeah. So, so we don't have alternates on pension? No. Is that, is that something, the charter, like where the charter would have to change? You can change alternates? the charter, also take a look at the statute, but you can add, but again, if you can have three, five, seven, nine. If you can't get three, it's gonna be very difficult to get nine. And, and I'll be honest with you, the, the two people who aren't showing up came before this council and begged to go on that board. They wanted to be on that board. They were going to make the changes, but they're not even showing up. So, And it's a very very concerning. So what, what happens October, I think it's the 21st, or around that date, the meeting is scheduled, and we go through the same thing, and we don't have a quorum. What happens? I, what happens to the people, people who are their expecting yeah, their pension? You, you, would be, you would be speculating as to what could happen, but right now, only because only it's happened the, three the out of six times. The pension, the pension board can approve the pension. There's nobody above that, so there's no administrator of the pension board and/or retirement board. They'd have to bring a special act before this town council. The council, on an individual basis, would have to enact an ordinance allowing itself to step into the shoes of the uh, pension board, which, again, is going to violate the Home Rule Charter. Yeah. Well, again, I mean, the cause and the reason why and the conclusion you're seeking is perfectly legal, perfectly lawful, and perfectly reasonable. But somebody could attempt to say, wait a minute, you can't do that because you don't have the authority to do it. Again, and, and some of the issues I know there's two individuals that have reached out to us, retired in May and June, 
and they have yet to get their pension. I mean, they're going to be reimbursed, but again, these well, are you have to live like, during that time period. You have period. to live. You, well, and again, I, I can't you comment. Put in, you can't. put in 35 <clears throat> years into the community, and all of a sudden, you've got to beg and plead for your check. And right. it's, 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 there's got to be, we, we've got to probably look at some sort of mechanism where Correct. we can let the town manager intervene well, to these meetings. I think there's, there's two issues. One, whatever severance pay or severance wages or severance compensation they're getting, I think that goes through. Uh, personnel. So if there is a lump sum coming to them, perhaps that's why they haven't been beaten down your doors over the last couple of months, because their pension money is protected to be retroactive. But sooner or later, when that <coughs> package starts drying up, I'm assuming they're going to come before you and say, we can't get our pensions because the, the, uh, the mechanism, that's that administrative right. body, is not meeting. But again, you guys can handle that just by notifying them. If you're not interested, resign. If you don't resign, we're going to uh, stop the process. Well, which, again, it's going to well, be difficult. Well, at this point, if you say resign, you, you know they're not going to show <laughs> but up again, at, the, at the meeting. So the you may not have a call. You want them out of there legally so you can replace them legally <laughs> as quickly as possible. You know what I mean? So yep. if, you, if you hang around letting them dictate a course right, of right, action, right. it's just going to keep being delayed, delayed, delayed. Versus either you want to stay and you're going to show up or you're not going to stay. And if you don't do anything, we're going to have to move as a council to remove you because you won't fulfill your obligation of showing up because you've got all these people that are waiting for you collectively to make that decision to either approve or not approve a pension. And if it gets approved, we're going to get the payment. How many people? Because that'll end up that'll end up in litigation. Right. right. If, if these people no, no. that are getting Sorry. paid through lump sums and that starts to dry up and they don't get their pension checks, believe me, they'll be in federal court before you can shake. Can't blame them though. No. Well, no, no. I'm not saying you should blame them. But again, I think the charter and the ordinances and the uh, uh, statutes don't allow you to do what you want to do as quickly as you want to do it. How many people, so, at the time you've been here, have you removed from any? Have you moved anybody from any boards in the time you've been here? Council attempted it once by using, you know, basically removal for cause, and the people I believe were on the uh, housing authority fought back and said, you know, you can't remove us because there's no policy or procedure in place that we would have noticed as to what we're supposed to do or not do. So it's very difficult to the, set into motion an action to get rid of them, yeah, of course. The, the only way that I've seen was um, their term expires, and if, somebody, and if they reapply it along with somebody else, then we would decide from there if we want to keep them it's on. The it's the appointment process. Right. If, they're, if they're not complying with their obligations as the appointing body, you can begin to remove them or basically throw them aside and so if you're not interested because you can't fulfill your obligations, you have to step down because, the, again, they're not the ones that are going to be before, before a court of law, the council will be. Right. So we'll just see what, what yeah. October brings. And maybe somebody should reach out to the people that haven't been showing up if it hasn't already been done to... Al, 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 Al Haru is a very thorough guy with this and with Tracy and he's done his due diligence it's just last minute it's like two like he showed me two o'clock I think he told me last time it was two o'clock in the morning they received an email saying I'm not coming but you may want to think and it's not the first time it's happened to address it through a charter amendment correct that's going to either expand it or allow the council to take the place of in the event that you that's can't correct. conform if, if we expand it if we expand it where they have five and eight three as a quorum if we expand to seven four would, would you need five you would need five so you're really not going to get anywhere. It's point you, like, you can three, five, seven, nine. I'm just wondering. I, I don't know if that quorum's four or three. I got to double check on that. I think that quorum's three. Yes. Because there's five members. Right. Mm -hmm. Could could you have alternate positions instead of having? If you have five, could if you have you two it, alternates you, in case two didn't show up? Like zoning. If you did it like zoning, right? Sure. But again, just because you're naming them alternates doesn't mean they're still going to come. You know what I mean? Well, you have a better chance at that point where you I, have... I, that you're speculating as to whether or not they would come. Like you said, David said two of the people that wanted to be on the planning board came to the council meeting saying, yeah, we're going to get on there, we're going to do a good job, and they're, they're the people that are not showing up. So even if you name them as alternates, it still doesn't mean they're going to show up. Things get contentious on the pension board, and people don't want to sit there and take a pounding month after month. I think that's... The, I think that'd be a better shot than to have the alternates. But again, you guys can you know, right. make the request to a charter change. Okay. Right. And when can we do that? Well, 
immediately? No, no, he, for 2020. Yeah, it has to be voted on. Adding alternates, is that also it's a charter change? 2020 well? ballot. Yeah. You, can right. th you can take a look at the current charter right. and yeah. the ordinances right, right now to determine what this body wants to do going forward in the event you cannot get a quorum. Because you have to have okay. some administrative body being able to make that decision. Right. I don't right. think you're going to be able to put it into the hands of just the town administrator or the town manager, but there might be a way to do it through town manager, human resources, and a couple other department heads. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment. Comments will only be addressed to the town council who will take them under advisement. When addressing the town council, please state your name and address. Please conduct yourself in an orderly and respectful fashion. The comments of citizens accessing this portion of our meeting are neither adopted nor endorsed by this body, but heard as requested. Any comment from the council? Any public comment? I'm Don Mariani, bad guy again. Uh, I'm the owner of Recycling Associates and the new company, Curbside Textile Recycling. Um, back in May, I approached Nicole about a curbside textile <coughs> program that we were going to try to implement into West Warwick. I wanted West Warwick to be the model town because I, I grew, I was born and raised there. Is this as a private, as a pri your business, as a private yes. business? Yes. Nothing to do with the town? Just, no. Okay. I approached the town to see if they would be involved. Okay. Um, my proposal was to give the town 12 cents a pound and three charities within the town. Don, can I cut you off there? You might not want to say what you're doing because you're going out to bid. And you may yep. just let all your competition know. No, I, but I'm just letting you know. No, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But we're, um, we wanted the town to get involved, okay, uh, to help us market it and help us go forward with it. Um, it took six months, and I had been pushing this to everybody. Um, Nicole was working with us, and we were trying to get this going. I didn't hear anything. Um, so... We put the wheels in motion and we've already started. The bags have been ordered. We are sending them out um, any day now and we will start the process of a textile recycling program from home, okay? They will not be putting the bins, the, the bags on the um, curbside. They'll be putting it in a visible area in their front door. Um, I'm, I'm welcome to, uh, still welcome to bring you guys on board the program. I'll, I'll put it out to, I'll um, also initiate a bid for you guys, but the, the, the longer I waited, the longer my competition started scooping up other towns. So I couldn't wait any longer. It was, it was a half a year. Um, so I had to move forward. Um, we can do this without the town's approval. It's already being done. Other, other, other companies already do it. And I've been, Nicole and I have been working with this for six months, and I, couldn't, I didn't hear from anybody here, nothing. So I had to move on. I don't know why it's 12 cents a pound. You guys wouldn't have to do anything. The ordinance alone is going to minimize the bins. It's going to be very strict on the bins. So, and this process of home collection is going to eliminate the bins. So there's a lot of clothing to be collected here because it's going to be a such, a, such an easy process to put the, the clothing right out by your front door. You don't have to bag it, put it in your car, drive it around for two weeks, and then find a bin to, lo to locate it. Um, it's an easy process, but I, I, I came to a roadblock. I didn't hear from anybody here for six months. And I'm willing to give you guys money. It's a win-win. Council Messier had the biggest desire to get rid of the bins. This was the process. You could get rid of the bins and make 12 cents a pound. And I got nothing. Echoes, crickets, nothing we from anybody. Stuff going on in the town. I understand right. that. I understand well, that. But an acknowledgement would have been fine because I would on, have said, on, okay. If there's going to be a bidding process and he's going to be part of that process, I would not recommend making any comment towards what I, Mr. Mariani is saying at this point in time. I have a question, though. How does this affect the bids itself now? The what? The, the bid. This would be the illegal. As, as, a, I, as, as a competitor, and again, hypothetically, maybe there's five. What Mr. Mariani says, I would assume, is trying to protect his best interest. So what he's saying, and I don't mean this to any disrespect, you know, you've got to take with a grain of salt because you don't know what he's saying is to protect himself, protect the industry, or protect the town of West Warwick. So since the town, in its prior uh, agenda item tonight, 
is going to be discussing a proposal based upon what the manager said, I would suggest listening to Mr. Mariani and not making any comment. So again, okay. this, this came before the council two, three meetings ago. Hmm. And the council had to go and start doing their research along with Nicole. And then you, we as a town, it's not like you as a homeowner can go hire somebody and say, here, this is what you're going to do. You actually have to make it legal and go out to bid, no matter what it is. Even if one guy came out and said, and there's only one bid, but again, he came for a proposal. <coughs> now there was two people. Now there's three people. There could be ten once you go out to bid. It's just like when you do fence work or anything in this town, you just can't go hire somebody at a certain dollar amount and say, here you go. I, I, I understand the process. I know you're that. looking at me. I understand the no, process no, no, no. fully. No matter how I'm just... it is, too. There's nothing against a particular company, but if someone's going to start a partnership between the private sector and the public sector, then transparency is going to be, it's going to be followed to the team. Of course. So, and I would have accepted that, and I would have yeah. accepted that. Fine. All right. So can I ask questions now or no? If you want to ask me questions, get Mr. Mariani. But they're going to be geared towards you because. <laughs> right. No, I'm, not gonna, be... I'm not going to answer them because again. All right. If Mr. If Mr. Mariani has already indicated that he can do this without the town's partnership, so he wants to start tomorrow. They've already ordered the facts. Unless something happens by law that's going to stop him, he can do whatever he needs to do. Correct. He doesn't require a partnership with the town. If the town's going to follow through with this, put it out to bid, and let's just say Mr. Mariani doesn't want to bid, well, then you're going to be in partnership with another company, then you'll be competing with Mr. Mariani. Okay. All right, so that's why I wouldn't. But so I would be, I would be involved in the bid. We could have four or five people going out there, going door to door. I'm sorry? We could have four or five companies going out there well, hopefully doing this. Hopefully you have 10, and they would make the, the best competitive bid that the town Well, not, not bidding-wise, not bidding-wise. All right. Well, that's right. You could have 13 companies. Because that's right legal. If it's you clean, I mean, to me, so I, it's so clean I to could money, basically it's have, clean up the streets. I could have, I could have five different companies come to my door with a, with a bag or a postcard and say, this is what I'd like to do. Sure. And that's mm -hmm. up to me as a homeowner to say, yes, you can, no, you can't. Yeah. Okay. Just like the Boy Scouts with Cambridge. Right. Well, okay. and just, again, it's right. Just Big like, Sisters and Big Brothers have done that. They sure. call so and they again, say, we're going to pick up on Thursday. that person's Thursday. private property. That right. person can do what he wants with his garbage. Right. With Correct. His okay. Yeah. Just, just, like, right. just like the town, if the town partners with anybody, it could be anybody. Nicole or whoever is going to send out notices, the company might send out notices saying, we're working in conjunction with the town. The town receives revenue, and this could help you as a town. So... We could be taken away from Big Brothers Big Sisters. We could be taken away right. from any company right. by right. doing that sense. because the person in the household says, well, you know what? The town's getting the revenue. This could help us in the end. Help my go to Fox like Rec, go to mm -hmm. tax reduction, yeah. whatever it may be, depending on how big it is or future yeah. tax increases, this will right. help. So th those are the things that we would be selling as a sales pitch, too. Don't uh, get me wrong. We'll be in competition with the competition. And, and it's not to say that I wouldn't um, donate money to... Uh, the town of West Warwick anyway. Um, we're already going to, we already plan to donate money to the West Warwick Dog Pound. That was one of the charities. So it's not to say that I, I, could, donate, don't, I could donate money to anybody. So I'd be willing to donate money to West Warwick even without a contract. Any other comment? Any other public comment? Yeah, I'll take one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Eyes have it. Happy Columbus Day, everybody. We have a happy what? Columbus Day. Oh, yeah, you too. <laughs>